Sudarshan Nayak. I am Associate Professor in Neurology in Institute of Medical Sciences at some hospital in Bhuvaneshwar. And I am going to speak to you about epilepsy and some of its do's, don'ts, and what are the first aid you are going to take for epilepsy. We will also discuss about some of the factors, etiologic factors and triggers regarding epilepsy. And in the end, I will give you a message regarding the purple nerve which we are observing for epilepsy and its eradication. Our brain is a specialized organ which is made up of many neurons. Epilepsy is a disorder of brain cells where there is an unorganized, dyssynchronous activity and there is spontaneous intermittent discharges from the disorganized neurons causing some abnormality of behavior. A seizure is one such episode whereas epilepsy is a continuum or a multiple episodes. <coughs> now uh, there can be various types of epilepsy uh, like there can be generalized epilepsy, there can be partial seizures, there can be focal seizures. Now to recognize what kind of epilepsy it requires the training of an expert doctor like a neurologist. So it is always better when we find such patients that we refer them to a proper or an expert, proper doctor or an expert. Now, Symptoms of epilepsy can vary depending on which part of the brain the seizure arises. Seizure can arise from various lobes and it may be generalized also. Uh, if it starts from the frontal lobe then features can be postureing of the limbs, there can be tonic deviation of the neck, there can be abnormal uh, movement of body parts, there can be jerking, there may be sudden loss of consciousness whereas if it arises from the temporal lobe then there may be abnormal aura phenomenon like a visual phenomenon, lights, flashes of lights. There can be also abnormal phenomenon like smell, uh, changes in behavior. Apart from that there can be epilepsy can have origin from the occipital or parietal lobe where there can be motor uh, uh, defects like patient may have tonic posturing of the body and patient may have deviation of neck and eyes to one side. It is important to recognize these symptoms of epilepsy whenever the patient loses consciousness, there is sudden fall to the ground, there is jerky movement. So the bystander must recognize what is happening and he should be able to impart proper care to the patient at that time. Now epilepsy can occur due to various causes or various etiologic factors like patient may have epilepsy due to birth trauma, patient may have epilepsy or seizures due to uh, some uh, damage to the brain especially after a trauma or a road traffic accident which is so common in our parts in these parts of the country. Patient may develop epilepsy after a stroke or after brain infection and now there is increasing incidence of HIV infection after which epilepsy occurs. Patient may also develop epilepsy after tubercular infection of the brain, after a bleed inside the brain. Patient may have uh, granulomas like neurocysticercosis which can cause epilepsy. Now, uh, there are certain triggers a patient of epilepsy may develop epilepsy after he loses sleep or there is a sleepless night. Patient may have stressors like stress, patient may forget to take medications and develop seizures. Patient may also develop seizures especially female patients during menstruation or when there is interaction with some other medications. Now, the diagnosis of epilepsy is also very important. The diagnosis can be made by uh, uh, persons or experts uh, when they require specific imaging like CT scan and MRI. 
patient may also require an EEG or an electroencephalogram. Some routine blood tests are also required during an epilepsy uh, to diagnose or to aid in the diagnosis. Now it is important that the treatment part has to be monitored and supervised by a trained physician or a doctor with care or expertise in this field, like a neurologist. Now patient may be prescribed a single drug or medications and he may be prescribed multiple drugs. So that has to be decided by the physician or the neurologist and the drugs has to be titrated and started in a small dose and should be gradually increased. Now apart from that treatment, there are certain principles which by uh, default have to be maintained during drug treatment. Patients should avoid alcohol or other uh, uh, stimulants and other drugs during uh, taking treatment. Patients should not be on any other substance abuse while taking these epilep anti-epileptic drugs. He should not smoke. Patients should take the drugs time to time regularly and if there is some additional drug which the patient has to take, he should consult his physician or doctor about the change in, or the new drugs which he is taking. Also, there are certain drugs which interact with anti-epileptic drugs which the patient or the physician should be aware of and as soon as the patient starts taking those drugs, he should inform his physician about those drugs so that a change in the dose of anti-epileptic medications can be made. Next, there are certain first aid which uh, we should properly follow when we see a patient of epilepsy or seizure. Now first thing there is nothing to be ashamed about about having epilepsy. It is just like having blood pressure or diabetes. The person should inform beforehand his relatives, family members and about the person and the persons with whom he is working about what uh, that he is having epilepsy. It is very important that the person uh, informs them about certain do's and don'ts. It is also important for a parent to inform the teacher, school teacher, if his children, if the children have epilepsy. It is also important for the parent to know themselves what to do if a child has epilepsy. Suppose a, chi a child has epilepsy or a person has epilepsy. The most important thing is to maintain an identity card or a drug card that you are taking these drugs and this is your identity. In case you lose consciousness when wherever outside or on roads so that the bystander or the next person he can inform you. There should be an indication of the address, telephone number, treating doctor, medications you are taking along with your name, age and uh, whatever other problems, comorbidities you are having. Now, apart from uh, the, having an identity card informing uh, the bystanders and family members about what the patient, uh, uh, to what the patient's uh, bystanders have to do during an epileptic attack, it is very important that if a patient has an attack, he has to be made prone as soon as possible. There should be every possible uh, uh, involvement of the bystander so that he can prevent a fall. You should hold the patient and make him lie down or make him flat and turn him to one side. As far as possible, try to avoid putting anything inside the patient mouth when the patient is seizing. Try to remain calm. The best thing is to allow the event to pass. There is no need, no hurry to do any other thing apart from making the patient survive and bringing him to a safe position. If the patient is swimming near heavy machinery or near any fire, then the patient should be made, uh, should be removed from the spot as early as possible. After making the patient lie down, make him semi-prone so that uh, after the attack ceases, patient will 
have a lot of copious froth from coming from the mouth which can just uh, regurgitate and cause aspiration. So that froth has to be taken out from the mouth and if we make him semi prone he may be able to take out the froth. As the attack passes the patient will uh, not regain consciousness from, uh, from the position of where he has lost consciousness. There may be confusion for some time. But it is very important that during the attack to loosen all the uh, protective clothing, neck tie or any tight clothing which the patient is wearing and also during that time not to give him any liquids or solids in the mouth. It is also important not to insert your finger into his tongue, uh, into his mouth so that the patient can cause a bite to the bystander. There is also no need to insert any stick or any handkerchief, anything inside the mouth so that the patient has no blocked airways. It is also important that when the patient has this attack to remain calm and also and not to talk loudly and also uh, tell other persons to remain calm that this phase will go off within 2 to 5 minutes. Each attack of epilepsy usually lasts for 2 to 5 minutes and medical aid is not required unless the attack lasts for more time. Now there are important don'ts. Do not keep any sharp objects near the patient. Do not uh, keep the patient uh, uh, in an awkward position so that his airways may be choked. Do not allow the patient to be swimming or be uh, in uh, near a fire or heavy machinery or sharp machinery during the time of attack. Suppose you go swimming or uh, you go for a bath, make sure that you take somebody with you so that you do not uh, end up in some emergency so that the other person is there to help you during that time. Also make sure that you are not under the influence of any alcoholic drinks or any, uh, any drugs during uh, going uh, swimming or even during driving you should always wear a helmet to prevent further head injury or facial trauma during an attack. Uh, what is utmost care is that when we have a child who is having seizures, we should always inform his classmates or his teachers to explain to the classmates that if the child has any such attack during the school period, he should be brought to safety and should be informed to the parents or doctor or teacher as early as possible. So, with this uh, uh, small brief about epilepsy. I would like to maintain that uh, we should not only vote for our uh, nation as our nation goes to goals, we should also vote to eradicate epilepsy, to remove epilepsy and observe this purple month as a month, not only this month but every month as a purple month and try to eradicate epilepsy at uh, by taking regular proper medications visiting the consultant if we have this condition, trying to bring people who are nearby whom we know to have seizures or epilepsy to the doctor's notice so that proper care can be taken.